Bestbookbits.com brings you the book summary of Embrace the Suck, the Navy SEAL Way to Extraordinary Life by Brent Gleason. Get into the Navy SEAL mindset with this raw, brutally honest, in-your-face self-help guide that will teach you how to thrive on adversity. During the brutal crucible of Navy SEAL training, instructors often tell students to embrace the suck. This phrase conveys the one lesson that is vital for any SEAL hopeful to learn, lean into the suffering, and get comfortable being very uncomfortable. In this powerful, no-nonsense guide, Navy SEAL combat veteran turned leadership expert Brent Gleason teaches you how to transform every area of your life, the Navy SEAL way. Can anyone develop this level of resilience? Gleason breaks it down to a challenge commitment control mindset. Challenge commitment control mindset. He reveals how resilient people view difficulties as a challenge, where obstacles and failures are opportunities for growth. Next, they have a strong emotional commitment to their goals and are not easily distracted or deterred. Finally, resilient people focus their energy on the things within their control, rather than fixating on factors they can't impact. Embrace the Suck provides an actionable roadmap that empowers you to expand your comfort zone to live a more fulfilling, purpose-driven life. Through candid storytelling, behavioral science research, and plenty of self-deprecating humor, Gleason shows you how to use pain as a pathway, reassess your values, remove temptation, build discipline, suffer with purpose, fail successfully, transform your mind, and achieve more of your goals you set. On with the book summary. Pain is a pathway. Life will eventually knock you on your ass. Accepting that fact is a stepping stone to growth. Just expect pain. Constantly trying to avoid hardship and pain will only hold you back. Each experience, each moment that you have is precious. Challenge every moment to make the best out of even the worst circumstances. You may well be amazed at the power, wisdom, and strength you gain in the process. You might be wondering this and telling me to go fuck myself, that I haven't been through the kind of suffering you've endured, and that may very well be true. My intention with this book is not to appear that I know it all or have experienced all the hardships life has to suffer. I'm simply providing a tool to use in your own way while navigating darkness and uncertainty. Brent Gleason. The point is we all have our own journeys. We all have to embrace the suck along the way. If you aren't falling, you aren't trying. Failure is usually a fairly demoralizing and upsetting experience. It can alter your perception and make you believe things that simply aren't true. Unless you learn to respond to failure in a psychologically adaptive way, it can paralyze you and ultimately keep you from moving forward. To deal with inevitable setbacks, Embrace the Suck has eight failure realities that you must understand. Reality number one. Failure makes the same goal seem less attainable. In one study of a special operations sniper school, instructors had their students fire at the targets from the same distance on an unmarked range. They had then their students estimate the distance to the targets. Students who scored lower believed the targets to be significantly further out than the students who scored the highest. Failure distorts perception if you allow it to. Failure distorts perception if you allow it to. The good news is, there are ways to avoid it. Reality 2. Failure alters your perception of your abilities. As much as failure can distort your perception of the goals, it can also alter your assumptions about ability. Students who quit buds or fail the selection process fall into deep depression, sometimes even become suicidal. Failure can make us doubt our skills, intelligence, and capabilities. Simply acknowledging this is the first step to self-correction. Reality number three, failure can make you feel helpless. This is a mental defense mechanism. When we fail, the brain sends signals making us feel temporarily helpless. It's an emotional wound, so to speak, like when a toddler touches a hot stove and the brain says not to do that again. The same applies with failure. When we allow ourselves to be convinced we're helpless, we successfully avoid future failures. But that's actually what makes you a failure when you listen to the voices and rob yourself of future success. Reality 4. A failure experience can cause a fear of failure complex. People also tend to avoid success as much as they try to avoid failure. The two usually go hand in hand. Success rarely 
if ever, comes without experiencing some failure along the way. This is why success is very uncomfortable. So rather than working on improving their abilities and skills, people head back to home base, their own cozy little comfort zone. Reality 5. Fear of failure often leads to unconscious self-sabotaging. Like the college student who decides to stay out drinking until 2am before a big job interview, he knows he'll bomb. Or the young kid who doesn't pick up a sport as naturally as his peers, so she tells her parents she hates it and wants to quit. These kinds of self-sabotaging behavior guarantee future failure. The best accomplishments in life usually reside on the other side of fear. The best accomplishments in life usually reside on the other side of fear. Reality 6. The pressure to succeed can cause choking. Choking at those critical game-winning moments. Blanking out during the test after weeks of studying. Leaving out the most critical talking points in your presentation are usually a result of overthinking. Proper preparation, not overthinking, is the bedrock of pulling off your best performance in critical moments. Reality 7. Willpower is like a muscle. Use it or lose it. Like muscles that become fatigued, mental willpower can become overworked and undernourished. Soldiers participating in sustained combat experience battle fatigue, which causes clouded thinking, lack of ability to control emotion, confusion, and even depression. So when you feel your willpower fading away, take a good rest and space to revisit your motivations. Just don't take too long. Reality number eight, the healthiest psychological response to failure is focusing on what you can control. This ability is fundamental to building resilience. Failure can result in us by focusing primarily on the cause of our current adversity. We look backward instead of forward. We focus on elements that we have no control over as opposed to developing an action plan, leveraging what's in our control. Do something that sucks every day. Stress and anxiety can be great tools if you know how to use them and choose to use them. With all the media and medical attention on the negative impacts of stress, it's easy to conclude it's irredeemably bad, something to be avoided at all cost. This applies to both the physical and emotional stress and anxiety. Think about a time when you experienced sustainable and professional growth or a time when you were performed at your highest level, say finishing a race, building a business, or saving it. Landing your dream job, raising a child, chances are all those moments shaped your growth and defined who you are today. Drawing on their work and research with business executives, Navy SEAL students and professional athletes, psychologist Aliyah Crum and Thomas Crum developed a three-step model for responding to pressure and harnessing the creative power of stress. The model looks like this. Number one, see it. Number two, own it. And number three, use it. Step one, see the stress. We typically only stress about things we care about. When we can start labeling that we care about, the solution for alleviating stress becomes far more apparent. For example, on the days the author is feeling stressed out, he asked his wife, why the hell am I stressed? The intention is not necessarily for her to answer his question. It's a method for him to break down the possible root cause and identify them. Usually it's not what he thinks it is and totally unrelated to what's actually consuming his thought. Step number two, own the stress. Owning the realization that we stress the things we care about unleashes the positive aggression within us. Deep down, we know things that really matter in life don't come easy. In SEAL training, the instructor Catbury designed situations that are exponentially more stressful and dynamic than actual combat so that the team learns to center themselves in the most chaotic circumstances. When the stress of that seems unbearable, the trainees can own it by knowing it's what they've chosen to do, to win in any situation. And step number three, use the stress. Though it often feels like the body's stress response was not designed to kill us, in fact, the evolutionary goal of stress is to help boost the body and mind into enhanced functioning, to help us grow and meet the increasing demands we face. Elite athletes and Navy SEALs know this. If they were to become the fastest, strongest, and toughest man alive in the world, pain, stress, and suffering would be a regular gateway. 
And while the stress response can sometimes have adverse effects, in many cases, stress hormones do in fact induce growth and release chemicals into the body and mind that rebuild cells, synthesize proteins, and enhance immunity, leaving the body even stronger and healthier than before. We're all going to die, so get off your ass and execute. We're all going to sing our death song someday. What matters is what we do at this moment in time. What mark do we want to leave on our friends, families, communities, and the world at large? What do we absolutely not want to regret on the day we sing our song? Will we reflect on our lives and realize we didn't take many risks and stayed safely in our village? Or will we know that we left everything we have on the battlefield of life? The answer depends on whether or not we choose to lean into suffering and get comfortable being uncomfortable. The choice is ours. And that's a wrap on this book summary, Embrace the Suck by Brent Gleason. Now, stop right here. If you want this summary in PDF format, click the link below where you can download this. And also, I've put together 450 of the best book bit summary in one massive PDF, 15 volumes, 7,500 pages. Download it now. Click the link below to grab your copy where you can read this on your phone, offline, online, anywhere on the go. Grab your copy now. Now, if you don't know who we are, we are Best Book Bits. We've done over 800 video book summaries on YouTube. So subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you never miss a summary. We've also done 800 audio book summaries on Spotify. So follow us on Spotify and also check us out at bestbookbits.com. We've done over 800 written book summaries uploaded there and more to come. Also, we've got a fantastic array of products and services with courses, coaching programs, and ebooks and physical books as well. So head over to bestbookbits.com forward slash products or click the link below to check them out. Thanks for watching and listening. Have yourself an amazing day. Go out there, embrace the suck, get strong, go out there and execute. Bye-bye now.